You tuned in to the Soulful Conversations podcast, featuring a panel of life coaches and spiritual leaders from around the world, discussing how to handle some of life's greatest challenges. We will be sharing stories of courage, hope, and inspiration with you, our faithful listeners, to live your happiest and most fulfilling life full of purpose and passion for yourself, your families, and the world. We are here to be the change we wish to see. Let the conversation begin. Welcome, everyone, to the first episode of the Soulful Conversations podcast. We are so excited to be talking to you today and and bringing together people from around the world talking about life's greatest challenges for all of us and sharing lessons that we've learned with you and having a great, frank discussion about them. So I'm going to let our co-hosts introduce themselves. Stephanie, your turn. Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Stephanie Young, and I am from the big town of Paris, Texas, and I'm a certified life coach and a published author, and I'm so excited to be a part of this wonderful journey with you all. Thanks, Stephanie. Katie, your turn. Hi, everyone. So happy to be here. My name is Katie Gilbertson. I'm originally from New Zealand, but live in Vancouver, Canada. I'm a holistic nutritionist, life coach, and Reiki master practitioner. And I am just, yeah, as I said, very excited to be here and to connect with all of you. Oh, thank you so much. And our special guest today is Herb. Would you like to uh, introduce yourself? Thank you for inviting me. I'm Herb. I'm from the Netherlands. And um, I kept running into all kinds of things like ghosts and other spiritual things. So all of a sudden I knew things and now I'm here to share. <laughs> Thank you. And I forgot to introduce myself. Um, my name is Dawn Earhart Witty. I'm in Los Angeles. I'm a life coach, an author, a speaker, and the founder of the Desire to Inspire Foundation, an organization that helps spread love around the world. So today we are so excited to be talking about connections, um, our connections, and then our connections to each other and the world beyond. And I wanted to start it off by um, one of my favorite words. When I went to Africa on one of my trips, I heard the word Ubuntu. And it was one of the greatest words I'd ever heard because it means I am because we are. And it is just, it's that we're all connected to one another. So something that happens to me doesn't only happen to me. It spreads out through greater energetically throughout the universe. And I wanted to read this story really quick. It's very, very short about Ubuntu. And I thought it was very, very beautiful. Um, It says, in certain regions of South Africa, when someone does something wrong, he is taken to the center of the village and surrounded by his tribe for two days while they speak of all the good he has done. They believe each person is good, yet sometimes we make mistakes, which is really a cry for help. They unite in this ritual to encourage the person to reconnect with his true nature. The belief is that unity and affirmation have more power to change behavior than shame and punishment. This is known as Ubuntu, humanity towards others. And I wanted to have a conversation about that um, because I just think it's beautiful. We are here for each other. And if you look through out all different uh, major religions and, and philosophies, that notion of us, our interconnectedness is, is throughout all of them. So Katie, I'm going to go to you and putting you on the spot. I would like, since you were the one that kind of had the notion of talking about connection for our first podcast, I'd like you to talk a little bit about how you feel that is, how important you feel that is. Well, I was, when you were reading that out, uh, chills, I, you know, for sure happened in my body. And I think one of the biggest things that we've talked about ever since we met is that type of connection and kind of going back to our roots and what our ancestors did and support each other. And, you know, no matter what happened within life, whether it was classified as something good or bad, you were supported and guided um, through connection with people as well as the planet. So whether that was through plant medicine or, um, you know, different forms of healing with shamanism and that sort of thing, there was always this form of connection. So you were never alone. Uh, So you didn't have to witness and experience that thing by yourself. Whereas today we've become so disconnected to ourselves, to each other, to the planet, that so many things we feel we have to do alone and it it becomes a real big struggle. And and what you just read kind of really puts forward all those beautiful things that our ancient tribes of everybody where we came from used to do naturally. And it's, Mm. it's, um, it's, 
it's one of the things that I found within, um, especially meeting both of you and now Herb as well, that there's, you know, there's, you can have connection, you know, we're disconnected today in today's world in a different way, yet we can connect via Zoom and online. So we start to utilize that platform in that way that we can do that. And I'm, I'm really grateful to at least be able to have that during these times of even more uncertainty and disconnect than we've ever had before. And that was one of the biggest reasons I felt that today's topic was so important to be connected. <coughs> How do we connect back to ourselves? How do we connect to somebody else? How do we connect to like-minded people? How do we connect back to the planet and the food that we eat and basically our energies and everything else that we have in life? And um, I think it was a great way for us to start this is let's connect together and let's connect out to the world so that other people can start coming in and sharing it and connect to others to also come in so we can build a beautiful community of support. Oh, I love that. You know, I mean, our connection to each other, if we all realize that our connection to each other, our connection to ourselves, our connection to something greater than us, no matter what you call it, I think a lot of the world's problems would be solved whether it's, you know, the environment or crime or, you know, any of those things, hunger, poverty, you know, if you took care of the person next to you, you know, there wouldn't be the suffering that exists today on the, the scale that it exists. Absolutely. So thank you for that. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Stephanie. It actually is an experience. Oh, sorry oh. to interrupt. But as you said, okay. I, I thought of an uh, experiment. I think it was some kind of professor or something who did it. Um, and they had the whole class put their name on a note and then put the note into a balloon. And then they filled up the whole classroom with the balloons. And then he was like, yo, go find your own balloon. And nobody could really find their own balloon. It took forever. And then he was like, I right, just pick a balloon and give it to the person who it's from. And within like, I don't know, five or 10 minutes, everybody had their own name back in their own hands. And it just shows that if we stop being so selfish and help each other, that everybody will be you know, achieving the goals that they have simply by just, you know, giving to another what you have yourself, what you can miss at least. And then that way everybody will be helped. Absolutely. And then how great you feel too when you're helping somebody with that. So handing over someone else's balloon, you've helped them achieve what they were trying to achieve. And so there's a, there's a sense of joy that comes in with you too, that A, you connect to somebody and B, you've helped them. So it's, yeah, exactly. it, it's a circular thing, right? It's not just a one-way street as you as the person giving or helping or creating that connection makes you feel good too. Mm. Yes, I love that. You know, I, I believe we are here for each other. And when we do do that, it shows that energetic um, exchange, the giving and the receiving. And it's beautiful when you live like that. And her, that was a beautiful, I, I've heard about that experiment before and that is absolutely beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Stephanie? Yes, I, I would just like to say, you know, what a great joy it's been, you know, to connect to Don. You know, you've been one of the greatest people to connect me to other people around the world. Like, how would I know Katie? She lives in Canada and you're in Los Angeles. I'm in Texas. So I think that it's just a beautiful thing. And I think that if we can look at everybody, even from the CEO to the janitor and look at each person with compassion and love and understand that we're all one. We're all connected in some way or force, you know, or source. And I think that if we listen to ourselves, you know, that intuition to connect to ourselves, I think that's how we find our greater power and our purpose is by listening to ourselves and how that's connecting. It's so true, Stephanie. And I know that thing that like once you do connect to yourself and you're sort of your true authenticity, the flow on effect of who comes forward in your life is instantly connected. And that's exactly what happened to me with Dawn as well was, you know, my pull was towards life coaching, which was life coaching to, to study in LA. And that's where I had the pleasure of meeting both of you. And it showed that as soon as I listened to my own intuition and connection, I then brought you both forward and not just both of you, there's, like I said before, now there's Herb as well. And then, you know, all the other people that I've connected to from that and that they're in that same vibration as I am in my moment now. And I think 
that's such an important part connect to yourself first it's like we hear a lot about self-love and to give love to yourself it's that same thing when you can connect to yourself you can give yourself love therefore you can love others yes and I like to say you know sometimes when I hear those negative thoughts or whatever going on in there I like to tell myself to uh, think about what my best friend would say you know and how would she guide you on that and then be that best friend to yourself because sometimes we're not and we're hard on ourselves and I think that, you know, if we can learn to be our own best self, and like you said, gratitude and self-love for ourselves as well as others, I think that's how we all connect. We're on that same vibration. Of, yeah, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to do the podcast the way we're doing it is having people from around the world talk about, you know, different topics was because, you know, when you talk to somebody in Africa or you talk to somebody in Europe or you talk to somebody in Canada or North America or wherever you're connecting from, we all want similar things. You know, we all want to be happy. We all want to be, you know, nobody wants to suffer. We all want joy in our lives. And so when you talk to people one-on-one -on -one and you connect on that personal level, you realize that we are all very similar. We are all, you know, connected to each other. There isn't that, oh, well, you know, those people over there, or you know how these people are. It's like, no, you, we all are, you know, humans and we all have some basic needs. I, and we're all different, which makes us like, like those beautiful flowers behind you, you know, different yeah. colors, different shades, different sizes, different, you know, varieties. But again, they're all beautiful flowers. And, um, you know, I, I don't want to throw in the pandemic here, but I, I wanted to say something about that because at the beginning, when we did the lockdowns in different areas and we, you know, isolated at home and everything, I wasn't worried or afraid of getting COVID as much as I was sad about our disconnection to each other. If we can't hug each other, if we can't, you know, get together and, you know, laugh and celebrate together, that, that to me is a bigger fear than, um, you know, anything else. Yes. Or what do you think about that? Mm. I think if you talk about connection, like, oh, well, there's so many things, but pandemic related, I guess, this social distancing and everything, and just in general, the way people view the world nowadays clearly shows whether they themselves are either connected or identifying more with their ego or their soul. Because you can just instantly feel if you talk with someone, whether they be online or, you know, in real life, like what kind of wavelength they are on. And you could always do that. But I think because of the pandemic, it's way more obvious what people are completely giving their energy to. And there's a lot of people that are just connected with the, or identified more with the ego and connected just with the media and all these things. But then if you just go into your normal life, there's not actually really that much going on. I think that's it's a really good point. Like the, how you say just that identification, because I've noticed that the bonus of so much disconnect has, has created a more calm so instead of being like amongst all the chaos of the world and the noise and the things going on, we can more identify what those connections are, whether it's like, you know, does this serve me and does it fulfill my soul as well as theirs? And, you know, unfortunately, a lot of the time and during these times, it's, well, no, that doesn't. But I think it's, it's made things become more clear for people that without that noise of constant happening that we've had to quieten mm. down, we can kind of connect a bit with that and back to kind of what dawn was saying why we wanted to start this a big part was to the conversations we had online on zoom together in general we wanted people to be able to be part of that and feel part of that a lot of the time when there's these particular sort of platforms or way things are spoken in quite script um almost order you don't really feel you can connect to that or be part of it whereas we're like we're just ordinary people that are having a great conversation that we want others to be able to come in and join us and feel that they can be part of it, that they don't have to be a specific someone or something to, you know, be the same as what we are. And, and I think that's one of the big parts to invite people forward to that. If you feel called to join us and speak about something to be reaching out. Yes. I always Absolutely. like to say, you know, uh, that, 
we shouldn't see ourselves as better than anyone or less than anyone. We're all equal. We are all the same. No judging. Right. We can all learn from each other. And it's also just if you do not connect with other people, which is a scary thing sometimes, you know, to open up, you will never find out if there is someone else who can either benefit from your experience or has gone through the same thing, but maybe, you know, a different perspective on it. Because there's a lot of people that are going through the same things, but because nobody really says anything, everybody thinks they're on their own. That's right. That's right. And when we tell our stories, I hope, I hope that it opens people up to do the same. To be vulnerable, you know, being vulnerable, it really takes courage to be vulnerable and put that out there. But I think that when we do share our stories, when we do connect with other people, especially that's on, you know, maybe doing the same thing or going through the same things we are, I think that that's very powerful. I was just going to say, uh, Stephanie's book is coming out, or by the time this comes out to the public, it's probably out already. But, um, you know, she is helping people through sharing her very personal story with others. So when she just said that, I was thinking that same thing. Stephanie, do you want to share a little bit about using your own experience to connect with others and help them through something to tap into what her book? Here's my book. I have it in my hand. (laughs) First of all, it's a dream. It's a, it's another dream come true because four years ago, this was just a thought in my head. I got the name of the book and that I needed to share my story for God's glory. And it was tough. You know, it was one of the hardest things that I've done versus burying my son uh, because I had to be vulnerable. I had to put that out there. And, and like I said, the only reason I did is in hopes that it would help inspire to encourage someone else that's going through. Um, unfortunately, Katie knows the, the, the pain and the tragedy of losing a child. And, um, you know, it's not just me saying it. Everyone would say, I think that's one of the worst things that a person can go through. And it's, it's like I said, it's not easy. Um, it's a day by day challenge. But um, I wrote the book and it helped heal me as well. You know, it helped a lot of things come out with me. And also it made me vulnerable to where I just hope that someone else could then see that I told my story and then they could tell their story as well. Because it's, it's really, uh, it's a hard subject to talk about and even harder to put into words. You know, uh, that's a pain that really there are no words for. But I tried my best and I succeeded and I'm very happy about it. And like I said, I just hope that in turn, it will help other people either connect to me in a way that they need help, that I can help them or that, uh, you know, they can find the strength to tell their stories too. I think it's mm-hmm. so amazing, Stephanie, and uh, you know I can speak on behalf of myself and Dawn how proud of you we both are, and you know it is. I think it's also an important part of you know sometimes we do connect through things like grief, and yeah. some of these things aren't difficult, and it is when we really do need that extra support to know we're not alone. It is a that in particular is a is a like you said there's no words to describe how difficult that journey is to go through and you know no matter how many years later there's still whirlwinds of thoughts and feelings that go about that and you know I think that's where you know we do need to connect you know help support each other this is how I feel or I'm struggling right now with someone who gets it and it could be the same for anything whether that's a success or uh, you know something else beautiful whether it's a birth of the child or a marriage or anything else to have that connection with someone to be able to share feelings and emotion about and physically connect with someone to you know it's just it's so healing in so many ways and I know for me having connected with you through our pain as well as our joy it's helped yeah. kill me in, in those ways. And so I cannot wait to read your story. That's, Thank I'm you, so Katie. excited. Thank you so much. And, you know, like I said, because um, when you go through something that tragic, you feel like in that moment, no one understands. No one, only God in you. And so being able to talk to another mother that also experiences that, it just, you know, it connects us in a special way Uh, But of course, I wrote the book, you know, pretty much intended for it to be to other mothers 
because only they will understand some of the things that I wrote in the book, you know, the feelings and the fear and the guilt and all that stuff with it. But just to be able to sit in front of someone else that also, you know, unfortunately feels this pain, it, it's very healing and very uplifting and inspiring. And Katie, I've learned so much from you too as well. And you very much are an inspiration. And thank you for everything that you do. Likewise. I don't know that I can talk right now. I feel like crying. <laughs> but but helping me beautiful, like joyous tears. Like it profoundly touches my soul and moves my spirit when I see these beautiful connections and friendships. And, you know, this is how we get through life together. Nobody's ever alone. You know, reach out when you're feeling alone because there is somebody out there that that can understand your pain, maybe not exactly the same thing that you've gone through, but something similar and can be there and just hug you and tell you they love you. They might not be able to fix it. You know, not all things are able to be fixed, but at least just that love that you can connect soul to soul with somebody else. It does make a huge difference no matter what we're going through. It does, because, you know, at first you don't want to hear nothing. You're just, you know, you don't want to hear anything. And you're not open to anything, but then as you grow and you heal and you transform through it, then that person that is brand new, it's something that, that, that can help them through that time. Because at first it's just so, it's so, uh, such a challenge, you know, just to even grasp your head around what's just happened. And, uh, and like I said, you know, it's been 10 years since my son has passed away and I'm just now able to really stand firm and, and try to help others say, this is what I did. And this is how I do it. And I, it may not be for you or for anyone else, but this is how I do it. And so if it helps you, great. That's all my purpose is for it. Herb, did you have anything to add into that? Uh, no, I was kind of just listening, really. And just, um, but I, I think that's a beautiful thing. And that is just a part of, of being human, I think. First of all, a lot of times, we don't want to share because we judge things, even though everything is just an experience. So, you know, you feel like if you're going to share, then somebody else is going to be trying to debunk your own personal experience, which happens a lot. Yes. So you close off more. And then it's also just the way our whole world is designed at the moment. It's not exactly for unity, so to speak. So I think it's a really beautiful thing that more people are like you trying to share their own stories through things like books and, and other mediums because we do really need that because at the end of the day how deep you want to go don't matter if you like spiritual or aliens whatever you're here and you're human and we have so many emotions like it is really difficult sometimes excuse my language so connection That's is just great. the most important thing <laughs> Yes, you just ruined our G rating. <laughs> <laughs> you just, I think you just made it real. <laughs> <laughs> no, it has to be real because we know we use those words. It's just part of life. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes more than others. <laughs> um, well, so I, I love all of this. I'm going to, I was looking up a few quotes because I love quotes. You guys know how much I love quotes. And I found one from Gandhi about our connection to each other. And I wanted to read that too, because I thought it was very beautiful. He said, I believe in the essential unity of all that lives. Therefore, I believe that if one person gains spiritually, the whole world gains. And that if one person falls, the whole world falls to that extent. And I, I do believe that that is, it is true. We are here for each other. And so uh, if if anybody is looking for their tribe, you know, find your people. I, I will tell you that has extraordinarily changed my life, finding people whose values are similar. And that doesn't mean that, you know, I'm saying there's a group that I don't want to associate with, but find your people that, you know, you could call anytime, any day, and they're always going to support you because that is that is how we get through this thing called life. Cause there are the joys and the beautiful parts of life. Most of life is that, right? But there are those yeah. moments that are hard and difficult and challenging. Even though we're life coaches or we are authors or whatever, we're still human and we still go through everything. And it's just a matter of learning some tools and how to get through that a little easier than what it may be had you not made that connection. Yeah, and I think it's that thing when we, 
you know, when you do find your tribe and those connections, a lot of the time when you are falling, they intuitively know to support you. And yes. that's been something that's been amazing for me is that I will get a message of love just right when I need it without yes. even having to have reached out. But if I do reach out equally, it's, you know, the other person on the other end of the line is, is there to support. And it's like we're saying, sometimes we don't just need, we don't need words. We don't need that. We just need to know that person's there. Yes. And, and to have their energetic presence helps literally cradle us through what we're going. And so we know we can fall back and there's, there's somebody there. Yes. Right. I think another thing with connection is that people need to understand that certain people are in your life for certain reasons. And, uh, you know, some of them just go for one lesson. They come into your life to teach you something. Sometimes it's very negative and then they disappear. And then other people, they are just like more of a uh, main character in your life. But if you're not very able to be alone, so you're not very good at sitting with yourself, which is why a lot of people try to flock around other things and distractions and whatnot. It's really hard to see which people are there temporary, so to speak, and which people are there to actually like build with. But even then still, people come and go. And it's oftentimes when we don't allow ourselves to disconnect sometimes that we start to kind of mess up our lives. Because if we have a person in our life for a certain reason and we neglect that, we will find the same person in a different body until we, you know, either disconnect Learn or the connect, list. depending. Yes, they're, they're yeah. repeating. And I think yeah. we've all been there in many ways of the, the continual different ways that yeah. it will repeat itself. And, you and can sometimes move to Mars and find someone there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's insane. Yeah, it's you'll always you find it. Yeah, you'll always find it. And it, it's so true. And that's, yeah, it's why that connection to yourself is so important. Yes, I call them yeah, our special people. You know, it's our special people. <laughs> but it's usually our greatest lessons that we learn from those people too. A hundred percent. You know, that we could talk about this for hours and hours and hours. And I, I just want to end the podcast with every, the, giving everyone a chance to sing, you know, one closing thing. And in closing, I want to invite people to follow our podcast, to listen to our episodes each month. We might be doing more because I just feel like there's so many things that we can talk about. Um, so many things that people are having struggles with or challenges with. And we want to help people get to the other side of those challenges with grace and ease and joy and um, so please reach out to us if you have a topic you would like us to discuss, you know, let us know because we're happy to delve into it. And again, we're bringing unique perspectives from around the world to the conversation. So, you know, we, we can hear we don't always have to agree on everything, but we are respectful of each other. We love each other and we want to hear what the other person feels and has to say. So please join us on this journey. I'm so grateful to be part of it. And I love you all so much. Thank you for this connection that we have. Stephanie, did you want to end? With yeah, yeah I just want to say, I think that it's beautiful. And thank you if you're here. Um, you know, there's really no telling what all we're going to talk about because it is just soulful conversations, just friends having conversations. And all we want to do more than ever right now is put our love and compassion into the world because there's not very much of that going around. And so we just want to spread the joy, the light, the inspiration to to just help in any way that we can. If it's something you needed to hear that day, great. If it's not, join in next time because it probably will. <laughs> and just thank you so much for everybody's support. I love you all so much. And I'm so glad to be a part of this. Thanks, Stephanie. And me too. I, I think both of what you both said is what I wanted to say as well in a, in a different way. And I you know, want to thank everybody who connected. I want to thank the three of you for connecting today with me and being able to have this conversation that's lifted my spirit and my soul and, you know, to outreach to anyone else who is going to connect into us. And please, please do reach out with anything that you would like us to discuss. If there's something that you feel you could bring to it, we're open to discuss that with anybody and, you know, just remember that, you know, we're each individual, we're all unique, we're all special, and we all have our place in the world. And, you know, we're grateful that you're in it. And much love to, 
to you three and to everyone else out there. Oh, thank you so much. Herb, would you like to leave us with your parting wisdom? <laughs> well, first of all, thank you for inviting me. Um, I agree with everything you guys said as I was thinking. I think I want to say that don't be afraid to try new things or try the scary things in the unknown. Don't be afraid to fail or get rejected or, you know, just don't be afraid of, of pain and things that we seemingly call negative because they're not. If you never try something new or never get rejected or whatever, then you're always going to stay the same. And that's no fun. Good point. Awesome. Beautiful. Very good point. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. -bye.